When talking about the security of our QKD system, we must discuss how the eavesdropper Eve attacked the system. In the BB84 protocol, Alice sends quantum states to Bob using single photons. However, we cannot use single photon sources in our system because current single photon sources operate at a low efficiency and frequency key rates. The transmission distances are limited. In practice, many implementations use laser pulses attenuated to a very low level to send the quantum states. These laser pulses contain a very small number of photons, for example, 0.2 photons per pulse. But this value is an average number, and there is no guarantee that one pulse contains at most one photon. Some pulses contain no photons, some contain one photon, and a few pulses contain two or more photons. Then this gives Eve a chance to eavesdrop the messages. Eve can perform two kinds of attack: beam splitter attack and photon number splitting attack. For the BS attack, Eve introduces a low loss beam splitter in the quantum path. In this case, Eve is able to gain a limited amount of information during Alice and Bob's key exchange. For those pulses Eve successfully split, she can either measure them in real time or store them in quantum memory until Alice and Bob announces their measurement basis over the classical channel to increase her information gain. The PNS attack is a more complex and powerful theoretical attack that obeys the law of quantum mechanics, but it also requires advanced technologies which are not yet commercially available. In this configuration, Eve replaces the quantum channel with a lossless channel, which is achieved through quantum entanglement. And uses a quantum non-destructive measurement to determine the number of photon n in each pulse generated by Alice. If n is less or equal to one, Eve blocks the pulse and sends nothing to Bob. If n is greater or equal to two, Eve stores one of the photons in quantum memory and sends the remaining n minus one photon to Bob. Because of the lossless channel, Eve must apply attenuation matching in order to not exceed Bob's expected detection rate and thus avoid becoming too obvious. Also, she must slightly elevate the signal state yields in order to meet Bob's expected detection rate while compensating for the signal photon pulses she blocked. Lastly, Eve listens to the classical channel for each pulse's encoding basis information, and correctly measure each stored photon. In this way, Eve is able to gain complete information on Alice and Bob's secret key bits without increasing the system's quantum bit error rate or contributing additional loss. In response, the decoy state protocol is introduced to mitigate these attacks. During quantum exchange, Alice randomly generates optical pulses in one of the three states: signal, decoy, or vacuum. Each state has its occurrence percentage and the unique mean photon number per pulse, the MPN. For example, the signal state is transmitted 7%, 70% of the time with an MPN of 0.6. The decoy state is transmitted 20% of the time with an MPN of 0.1, and the vacuum state is transmitted 10% of the time with an MPN approximately zero. In order to maintain integrity of the protocol, each pulse must have identical characteristics, for example, wavelength, duration, and shape, other than the MPN, such that Eve cannot distinguish a decoy state from a signal or vacuum state. Then Alice and Bob. Announce the basis used used to prepare and measure each pulse. They also announce their states: the signal, decoy, or vacuum. Next, a number of decoy state protocol calculations are made from system measurements. Finally, the estimated signal and decoy photon number dependent yields are compared. And if there's no eavesdropper, we expect y n equals to Yn signal and Yn decoy, while Yn represents the conditional probability of detecting a pulse at Bob, 
given that Alice sends an n photon pulse. Y n signal represent the signal state yield. Y n decoy represent the decoy state yield. And n equals to one, two, three, four, or five. The, the security condition Y n equals to Y n signal and Y in decoy should be always true when operating normally because the estimate yield depends only on the quantum channel efficiency and the number of photon per pulse. They are independent of the state, state type. Thus, any deviation from the security condition indicates adversary eavesdropping. Here's detailed calculation. What happens to the beam splitting and photon number splitting attack? In a beam splitting attack, the beam splitter introduces a universal loss on the quantum channel. Since both signal and decoy state pulses are affected to the same extent, Alice should have a result of equal amount of signal and decoy photon number dependent yield. However, some photons sent are reflected off the quantum channel by the beam splitter, the signal and decoy state photon number dependent yields will be different from the expected value. In the photon number splitting attack, since the decoy state pulses have a lower mean photon number, there is a higher chance for decoy state pulses containing less than one photon per pulse than the signal state pulses. Remember that in the photon number splitting attack, Eve's blocks the ball pulses and sends nothing to Bob when there is less than one photon in the pulse. And then she replaces one photon into quantum memory and sends the remaining photons to Bob when there are two or more photons. However, Eves unavoidably blocks a larger number of decoy state pulses. This causes the decoy state photon number dependent yields to be significantly reduced and therefore statistically different than the expected and than the signal state yields. To conclude, here is a modified BB84 QKD system by adding the decoy state protocol into it. We can have a theoretically secure system that cannot be eavesdropped following the nine steps on this figure.